Uh, yeah, so uh, I thought I'd uh, bring some controversy to the stage. Um, so the, the, the story of this uh, talk is actually, uh, um, uh, Chris uh, mentioned this uh, sentence in a, in a conversation we had, and it got me thinking and, you know, submitted a session for it. Uh, didn't really think about the submission of the session for more than about five minutes, and then, uh, yeah, it got selected, so then I had to come up with the whole story. Um, so that was a bit of a, uh, a thing, but I'm here and uh, we have a story, so uh, uh, I hope you'll uh, enjoy it. Um, so the, the uh, uh, Docker is a new tarball and Amazon is a new VMware. Um, I thought I'd kick some people uh, and make them angry. So if you're angry, at the end of this talk, throw stuff, preferably not vegetables. But um, um, I thought I'd start with a... Uh, um, uh, bit of history. Somebody actually already figured it all out in like the 17th century. Uh, an object that is at rest will stay at rest unless a force acts upon it. Uh, I think this goes for lots of people in IT and engineering uh, that unless they need to move, they won't. Um, and the question is, is that a good idea or not? Um, so yeah, this was Isaac Newton, 1687. Uh, it's in Latin, so I'm, it's a quote, but it's not actually a quote. Uh, apparently, the literal translation is a bit out there, so, uh, yeah. Um, in the end, uh, we have come a long way. Uh, so, somebody uh, created this thing called a loom. I don't even know the, what, what a loom is, but uh, uh, they have created that, and that's the earliest evidence I could find of some kind of computing uh, device. Uh, all the way through uh, uh, um, uh, punch cards, uh, down to where we are today. I took this screenshot today. 2.7 billion people have watched uh, Gangnam Style by Psy. It's the top video on YouTube. So we've really come a long way through all kinds of industrial revolution to too many videos. The more depressing part uh, is if you are a young parent, uh, in the top 10 uh, videos on YouTube is the wheels on the bus go round and round. And I'm pretty sure that my son by himself has contributed 100 million views uh, to that song. He just keeps <laughs> pushing it. Um, anyway, uh, so the question is, did we really come a long way? Um, we have got a lot of new technologies. Every year we have new things that make us think, hey, we have solved problems that we had before, and then uh, those new technologies introduced new problems that after a while, people get annoyed enough to solve those problems, and you know, on and on uh, goes the innovation train. But the question is, have we really uh, come further? Uh, I thought I'd come up with a, uh, a few uh, examples of this. Uh, configuration management, as amazing as it is, and as many problems as it solves, uh, uh, we were kind of trying to replace bash scripts, and then we replaced it with more scripts, just a different language. Um, obviously, we've also solved a bunch of problems on the way, but in the end, we're just still writing a bunch of code uh, all day to get done what we wanted to do in a simpler way. Um, and I've spent the last four years training people around the world in scripting Puppet instead of Bash or whatever. I much prefer Puppet over Bash because you can, you can have your spaces uh, uh, in different places and not worry about it. Uh, number two, this is a very funny uh, uh, tweet from, uh, from Fosdem. Uh, everybody is praying for a simpler solution. Um, Docker is uh, replacing, roughly replacing tarballs. This is where you can start throwing things at me. Um, before we would throw code over the wall in a tarball or in whatever, uh, Git repository, and now we make that into uh, Docker files or Docker images, whatever it is. Um, and it's still up to other people to figure out how it works or what to do exactly with it. So the question is, does that really uh, um, make for a better situation? Um, it's not about the, the technology that you're using to communicate. It's about the communication that you're using uh, surrounding the, that, the, that technology. Um, Last one, uh, Amazon replaces VMware. Uh, lots of people are excited about Amazon. I'm very excited about it as well, myself. But um, in the end, we're going from a place where we had people with lots of uh, 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 vendor lock-in, where they had years-long contracts for uh, hardware and stuff that they had on-site. They said, oh, it's so awesome. We'll all go to Amazon. And now 
if you adopt Amazon the Amazon way and you drink all the Kool-Aid, then you have a whole bunch of services sitting in a very specific vendor-locked uh, uh, cloud. And you're, you can move faster, but you haven't really uh, uh, innovated that much. So in general, we can say that the goal of these kind of uh, innovations and new technologies is to, uh, to come up with simpler ways to uh, solve complex problems. But if you've been around for a while, you will probably have noticed that complex problems don't generally have simple solutions. We have solutions for them that make them seem like simpler problems, only to have those simpler problems build up to another complex problem. Um, so, are we just moving complexity here, or is it to keep ourselves busy and to generate new business and to make it possible for us to go to conferences and learn about new technologies? Um, I personally think that the truth is somewhere in the middle. Uh, we, uh, uh, we need to keep moving to keep up with the pace of business and the, and the pace of uh, uh, the, the expansion of computing. So we're doing more and more and more, and we need a way to handle those situations. Uh, however, the, the systems remain complex. They're just expanding. Um, these innovations, uh, are they even wanted? So uh, I spend a fair deal of my time consulting in uh, fairly traditional uh, enterprise uh, organizations. And uh, the pushback there towards lots of new technologies is usually very much reluctance. Hands up if you re uh, recognize that situation. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, um, uh, from an engineering perspective, that is unfortunate. Uh, from a business perspective, it's sometimes understandable, sometimes not understandable, sometimes based on uh, wrong understandings. Uh, but yeah, so that there is a, a conversation to be had there uh, of, okay, we have new technologies. Do we want this particular new technology? What is it going to bring us? What is the risk involved? Uh, Patrick had some very good uh, uh, points just now about uh, uh, the risks that are involved with putting things into services and putting, uh, giving, giving away control to external providers. Um, as that may be, uh, it can also solve, you, solve your problems in an easier way and save you a lot of time in the meantime. So the question is then, how do you decide whether or not a new technology or a new service is a good idea? Are we okay? Just plug it in and pull yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the solution. Um, yeah, so the, the, the question is how do, we, how do we decide whether or not to go for a new uh, piece of technology? Um, this slide might be a little bit small. And luckily, the screen is very big, so it's not so much of a problem, but uh, it was a lot to fit in a, in a slide. Um, so I thought a lot about, OK, so when you are deciding about new technology to use it or not use it. How can you determine whether or not you should go for this or you should not go for it? Uh, in the end, it boils down to the cost of uh, a cost versus benefit kind of uh, kind of thing. The cost of a new solution can roughly be broken down into the cost of implementing that new solution now, uh, the cost of maintaining that solution over, uh, over its lifetime, and potentially moving off of that solution once the time arrives. Um, obviously, you still have the question of how long are we going to be on this solution, and that's always a question. So you have, for instance, if you look at uh, uh, moving, uh, moving to Amazon, it's a, it's a very uh, uh, common question these days. How long is Amazon going to be around? Nobody really knows. The next year? Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet on that. The next three years, probably. Um, but it's hard to say that in the next five years, there might not be a competitor that figures out some way to do it all faster and better and easier and you know, reduce the complexity uh, or reduce the cost or whatever. Um, so determining that lifetime is, uh, uh, is not an easy, uh, an easy thing. 
On the other hand, uh, if you're looking at, for instance, uh, uh, VMware versus Amazon or uh, Docker versus your, uh, your tarballs, um, there is a, a significant uh, a value in, uh, in having a newer technology. Uh, it differs a little bit per technology, so you have to determine what that value actually is. And if that value is bigger than uh, the, uh, the cost of implementing the, uh, the new solution and adopting it, then you might have a situation where it's worth uh, uh, moving towards a new uh, uh, technology. But as you can see here, I have intentionally put, where is it? Oh. <laughs> value and cost in uh, quotes, uh, because this is not necessarily something you put dollar amounts on. Uh, and even if you want to put dollar amounts on them, it's very difficult to come up with a scientifically exact number or some kind of even ballpark estimate in some cases. Uh, the cost of a, uh, of a new solution uh, includes tangible uh, uh, things, but it definitely also includes intangible things. Technical depth, is that something that you can put a dollar amount on? Not really. Uh, it's usually something that in involves a lot of debate on what is even technical depth. Oh. 1.6 gigabytes. 1.6 gigabytes. <laughs> um, uh, mean time between failures, uh, uh, the, the time to repair, from, uh, to, to recover from failure. If you can significantly reduce the time to recover from a, uh, from a failure, then that is a, a huge benefit to, your, uh, to, your techno to a new technology. That is not necessarily uh, uh, um, something that you can easily put a dollar amount on. Uh, on the other hand, on the savings and optimizations part, we have some very important things that are also hard to put a dollar amount on if it's not even impossible. Uh, engineer happiness. Uh, we are all much happier working on new problems and working on problems that we haven't solved already 20 times uh, than we are fixing, uh, uh, I don't know, a broken VM again and again and again and 300 times again. Um, so engineer happiness and sanity will create a good culture uh, in your uh, organization will mean that good engineers will stay, new engineers will join, that uh, raise the quality of your, uh, of your culture and along the way uh, propel your business forward by having a better uh, capability in your IT organization. Uh, re responsiveness to change requests from the business, so uh, if you're uh, uh, adopting uh, uh, some kind of, uh, um, how, do I, how do I say that, self-service uh, uh, controls uh, that allow people to bring up new infrastructures by themselves uh, whenever, whenever they need them, that is a significant benefit. Uh, I have been in one too many organizations where uh, the smallest change uh, requires submitting a ticket with someone and then waiting for 17 departments to agree on it and then waiting for a uh, maintenance window and then et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm currently consulting with a client. They have uh, uh, a reasonably sized organization. They have uh, four um, uh, F5 load balancers, hardware load balancers. Two of them are running in the production network so they can only be changed after a whole bunch of procedures, fair enough. Uh, it's production after all. Uh, the other two are in the other data center, which happens to be also the DR data center, so they are also classed as production, which means that uh, we are setting up a new, or, uh, a new environment, and for every single little change, they need to have a runbook and a, uh, a change request, et cetera, et cetera, even though it doesn't touch any kind of uh, uh, production environment. Uh, and time over time, uh, this means that we have to wait for days, if not a week, for some kind of review board to look at the change request that is not even for an environment that is anywhere near production. It just happens to touch a production router. Those kind of things are costly, so if you would have uh, um, and software defined networking, all of a sudden this problem uh, goes away either partly or entirely and you can, you can move faster. Uh, you can start to see how this all involves the, uh, or uh, not involves, uh, influences the decision on whether or not you should go for a new 
technology. Um, however, a lot of these discussions uh, uh, tend to focus on the uh, parts where people can put a measurement on it and can put a dollar amount on it. So uh, this is a, a, a difficult uh, a thing to manage. Um, I think that part of this discussion is also that, uh, uh, so I've seen one too many uh, uh, organizations where there's an endless uh, uh, bike, bike shed discussion on uh, things that don't necessarily always matter to the business. They might be good engineering discussions, but many engineering departments uh, forget that uh, ultimately they are a function of the business and whatever they do should be in the best interest of the business. There is a footnote there though that says the business does not necessarily always know what is best. Um, I think the most fun uh, one uh, 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 anecdote that, that I have for that is uh, a couple of years ago uh, we had an inquiry um, by a, uh, an IT management person, definitely not someone with the very much technical knowledge, and uh, they said, uh, okay, I would like to have uh, uh, this infrastructure with all of these things, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, and uh, our budget is uh, $700. <laughs> like, okay, that's not <laughs> a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> how did you arrive at $700? Uh, and he uh, quoted me a, an article from the well-known uh, Dutch news website nu.nl, uh, which uh, 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 had a story about a radio station that is always uh, every at the end of every year they have a, a month-long uh, uh, action kind of thing. And in the article, there was a quote from uh, the IT manager from that uh, uh, radio station who said that the bill for, for his Amazon uh, uh, resources was lower than the cost of providing pizza for his whole team. And so our uh, prospective new client had determined that based on that, uh, $700 was a very reasonable budget uh, for him to uh, have a new infrastructure that would cost, let's just say, a little bit more than $700. Um, so, you know, it's, it's up to engineers uh, also to explain uh, uh, to uh, a business what is best for them uh, and ultimately uh, uh, together find a, a common ground and, and determine which way to go forward. Um, I'm an very much an open source uh, 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 lover, even though I use a Mac. I'm going to return that thing after this conference, but different story. Um, how does open source fit into this picture? Um, depending on how long we are going to stay on this technology, we want to know how much it takes to get off of this technology. As uh, uh, um, Patrick just said as well, the most important thing is your data not necessarily how you process it, but it's your data. If you put your data in somewhere, you, you want to make sure that you can get it out. Open source doesn't necessarily guarantee that this is possible, but it is definitely going to make your life a little bit easier. Um, I'm a fan of uh, uh, chat solutions like Slack and HipChat and whatnot. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of Mattermost, which happens to come bundled with GitLab these days. Uh, because all of a sudden you are in control of your own uh, uh, data. The stuff that you put in Mattermost lives in your database on your environment. And yes, there is a, a cost to managing it all and there is no flashy mobile client, uh, but uh, it does its job well uh, and it's fully open source. The same thing for GitLab versus GitHub or whatever other source control solution. Um, if GitLab goes belly up next week because they decide that maybe dropping a database was a little bit too expensive. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, no, it, too soon was uh, uh, Sunday morning when I had a talk about GitLab with a bunch of GitLab em employees in the room and I, I also couldn't uh, re resist to uh, make a joke. Um, anyway, yeah, so if GitLab goes belly up tomorrow, Everybody who runs self-hosted GitLab has not really anything to worry about. There won't be any more updates, but they have, you have your data and you can access it anytime you want. You could even decide to 
uh, make uh, changes to your GitLab yourself if you really wanted to. Um, so very much uh, uh, in accordance with what, uh, what Patrick was just saying, uh, services that are run by external businesses, uh, that has a bit of a tendency to be a, a risk factor. Um, it's not necessarily going to solve a problem uh, if it's running on open source, but even if you know that that business is running uh, uh, an open source technology, that means that you could run it yourself if, you, if the need arises. Uh, for instance, uh, RDS on Amazon is really quite nice. Uh, the DynamoDB uh, stuff is also quite nice. If you wanted to or if you needed to, uh, sorry, not uh, Dynamo, uh, Aurora is quite nice. Um, if you wanted to or you needed to, tomorrow you could run it on-premise again. All you needed was, you know, that little bit of data that's sitting in there, but uh, hopefully you'd already have a solution for that. Uh, how confident am I? What safeguards do I have that this dependency is worth it? If you're going to uh, uh, go to new uh, technology, um, sometimes it might be worth the uh, uh, how say that the uh, uh, the risk uh, that you run uh, to uh, move there if the benefits are large enough. This boils back down to what I what I said before. Um, I don't have exact answers to uh, how to calculate these or how to come up with these, but it's, it's more of a guideline of how to, to look at this, these kind of problems. Um, lastly, uh, I was just talking to someone, I forget who it was, and uh, about the topic of my talk, and he uh, brought up Porter's five forces analysis. Does anybody know what that is? No, I, did. I didn't know neither, so I Wikipedia'd it, and uh, it's, a, uh, it's a, um, uh, a theory from uh, uh, e econo economics, uh, which uh, kind of uh, um, tells you what the, the risks are to a business uh, um, that are the risk factors that are influencing it. So I thought, okay, that's, let's see if we can come up with an uh, uh, analogy with, uh, uh, for new technology adoption. Um, we have the threat of new entrants. Uh, if we go for, I don't know, uh, GitLab today, who says there is not going to be a, uh, a different company tomorrow that has a better technology that I should have adopted, uh, which makes my choice a, either a dumb choice or a choice that is not going to pay off very well. Uh, threat of substitutes. Uh, what if the company decides, okay, uh, this technology was not what we wanted out of it, so we're going to replace it with something else. Now you have to uh, invest time into uh, replacing what you already had. Uh, not necessarily because you want to, but because you have no other real choice. Uh, and the other two uh, forces that are uh, uh, at work, uh, bargaining power of engineering, uh, so as I said before, uh, it's very common to have long, long engineering discussions. Uh, when we just got started with, uh, uh, with Puppet um, uh, oh, seven years back, there were lots of discussions on whether I should go with Puppet or Chef, and these were endless discussions, and you know, as we were doing a lot of Puppet, people were asking us, and my discussion was, or my, my answer was usually yes, you should do Puppet or Chef. Like, I don't really care what you do. <laughs> I don't care if you buy a BMW or a Mercedes. These are both good cars. Uh, just figure out if you need something with four wheels that drives you somewhere, and if you do, then you know, buy a car. Um, so lots of bike shed discussions, and on the other side, a bargaining power of non-engineering. Uh, I think we've all seen it a little too often that uh, decisions have been pushed down from above that don't necessarily represent a solid decision. Um, but they are uh, uh, pushed down, and uh, yeah, that is something to, uh, to take into account. Um, so that was kind of what I had to say. Um, are there any questions so far? Are we ready for beer? Totally ready for beer. All right, thank you very much.